Growing up, I lived in a bubble. Not one of those bubbles. And not a bubble like the playoffs of the NBA season of 2020. My bubble came in the form of being raised in a loving, hardworking, dual parent household in one of the most densely populated African-American cities in America, Gary, Indiana. Growing up, I idolized athletes like Bo, Bo Nose, Jackson, and watched sitcoms where characters like Steve, did I do that? Urkel made it cool to be a nerd. The word minority was never even on my radar because not only was I surrounded in a community where individuals resembled me, but my parents ensured that the images of Black America that I was exposed to were overwhelmingly positive. To really bring that fact to life, and it's a true story, as a kid, I quit piano lessons because they coincided with the start time of two of my favorite TV shows, The Cosby Show and A Different World. And as a family, we had just graduated from 11 inch black and white TV to color TV. So this was long before the modern day era of record live TV and watch it later. The irony of those experiences of growing up around so much black excellence at such an early age is that I foolishly, with all my heart, believe that black people were the majority, not just in my hometown, but all across the nation. Until one day, that tiny little bubble I had been living in was popped wide open. Nobody knows the trouble I've been through. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Sixth grade. First year in public school, nervous, yet I played it cool. Still surrounded by peers that looked like me, but a vibe much different than my previous five years in private school. Fighting on the playground was a regular thing when the recess bell rung, fists swung, and I had my fair share of battles. Some lost, some won. Nobody knows the trouble I've been through. By the end of that school year, my demeanor had my parents disturbed. A real life Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Three years, three different schools, only this time shipped off to the suburbs. From shared connections to classmates, to being exposed for the first time to hate. Minding my business head down, not knowing how to relate, not knowing there would one day be a trigger. Get out of my way, you stupid nigger. Enraged by those words, I pounced and pounded with all of my might, but the event overshadowed by the chorus of students surrounding, chanting, fight, fight, a black and a white, fight, fight, a black and a white. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Some events, no matter how far back they stretch, remain etched in our brains. Soul piercing scars worn like unseen tattoos of pain. I pulled back further after that verbal attack. Not much longer thereafter, the health of my mother went to rye. I took an extended leave from school, not knowing if I would ever return back as she battled to survive. Her courage and determination to cheat death during her fight taught me that there are no cheat codes in life. Instead of isolating myself and remaining a victim, I used communication in place of fist as a means towards fixing a broken system. 
Upon my return to school, I opened a dialogue. Hey man, what you called me in the hallway? It wasn't cool. I know, and I'm sorry, it, it was stupid. It was dumb. Wanna hang out with me and the guys after school so maybe we can get to know each other some? Nobody knows the trouble I've been through. Nobody knows. Actually, everybody knows. But what we do with that knowledge can make a difference in how we impact the world. I've heard that acceptance is the first step towards recovery, a step towards change, a transmutation of pain where ways of acting and thinking no longer remain the same. Funny, but the word privilege was not met with controversy until you put a black or white in front of it. Resistance from a feigned acceptance of those unwilling to confront its existence. Objections like, I worked hard for what I have. My family never owned slaves or I made it out of less than ideal conditions. Why can't you arguing against it? Prison numbers climbing, redlining, profiling viewed as mere coincidence. I grew up in a city where many of my peers' biggest dream was to not be in jail or the ground before the age of 18. A city where the staccato of gunfire at night filled the air like ghetto symphonies. Give us us free! Screamed by the masses long after Amistad, but I survived the Middle Passage. My survival, my freedom, does not give me a free pass to turn my back on a younger generation experiencing the same cyclic regeneration. My privilege comes in the form of service, guidance, conversations like this. Not a right, but privilege. Privilege, a word synonymous with freedom. So why be offended by its usage? Instead, use it to make an impact much larger than life, larger than black, larger than white, simply by committing to use the privileges gained to advocate against wrong and for right. Breaking down barriers by building allies and combating a flawed system with systemic change through awareness and action, replacing emotional reactions. My eyes have seen the glory of the power of actively listening to converse, not disperse, rehearse narratives regurgitated, but the glory of empathetically listening to your story, their story, shared stories that collectively come together to turn our story of privilege into purpose.